All right, so now I want to talk about untracked files and files we don't want to commit. Files that we're going to have in our working directory at our writer's desk, but files that we don't want to send to the publisher. We don't want the repository to see. And, you know, you're kind of maybe thinking, okay, where, where would I ever have a file I don't want to push to the repository? Well, maybe you have a reference file. Um, you know, for example, a lot of times in... Um, Python, there's PYC files, maybe it's just a compiled C++ file. There's plenty, plenty of examples where there's files we don't want to push, we don't want to see, and that, you know, will be generated and put in there, but we really just want to say, just get rid of those files. So let's go through that example first. Um, if we look at my repository here, we got nothing. Nothing new, everything's clean. Let's add some junk files. So I'm just going to do, let's do... Um, for those of you, you know, familiar with Unix, touch is pretty much just we're creating this file. We're not doing anything to it, but it's just like, you know, we're touching it. So it's there. We know it's there. So I'm just going to do touch junk one, touch junk two, touch junk three. Okay, so now if I look in there, you're going to see I've got these three new files, junk one, junk two, and junk three. If I look at my get status, it's going to say, hey, these are untracked files. We've never seen these files before. Git's not tracking them. If you add them, git add to track them. You know, then we're going to track them. So it's like, oh, okay, well, let's say I don't want to track these. Let's say these were generated. These are PYC or, you know, dot something something that we don't want to track. They just kind of came up and we're like, oh, we want to get rid of that stuff. It's not something I want to push. Well, instead of, you know, going through the file directory one by one, git gives us a nice easy command of i can do git clean and then it gives us a little more commands after that of i can do git clean n dash n that's going to give me a dry run that's going to say here's what that would remove it's going to say would remove junk one would remove junk two and would remove junk three now i can also do git clean dash f which is like for force so that means whatever happens i don't even care what these files are delete these files i don't want them so this is going to just straight up wipe those files. It's going to say it removed them. Now if I do a git status again, they're gone. If I look at my directory, they're gone. So that's a way to get rid of, you know, remove files that just kind of pop up. Now, another thing to talk about, though, is the .git ignore file. This is a very powerful, very useful file that's going to help you a lot um, throughout your, you know, kind of git journey. So first off, it's not automatically generated. If we look in our director here where there's a .git, but we don't really see a .git ignore. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to just go ahead and make it. Now remember, this is my command for Sublime. Um, you're going to just use your, uh, whatever you use to call your text editor, and I'm going to say .git, oh, that's a comma, .git ignore. Now it's going to go ahead and it made that file .git ignore. Really just it made a thing I have to save it before it's actually in there. But this .git ignore file is something we're going to commit and something git knows to look for. And it's going to say if there are any files in here that match a file we have in our directory, we don't want to commit that file. We're going to ignore that file. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. .git ignore will tell your git what to ignore. So I'm going to write inside of it um, stupid file.txt. All I'm going to write, right? I'm going to add that file then, obviously. I'm going to do touch stupid file.txt. So I've told my git ignore, hey, there's a file, stupid file.txt. I want you to ignore it. That's not something I want. So if I do ls now, there's my stupid file.txt. I show all of them. There's my git ignore. If I do a git status, normally we would think, okay, we've added this new file. It should show up now. Well, it didn't show up. Our git ignore showed up, which is good. We want to commit that. We want to, you know, tell other people what we're ignoring in our file, because generally those things are going to be the same. And it's also something that if you all have different git ignores, you know, sometimes you're going to conflict of, you're going to get conflicting things. You know, maybe I'm git ignoring some things, maybe I'm git ignoring others. So you might want to talk about kind of, you know, your global settings. There are other ways to configure that. But the main point to get here is this file did not show up in our git status. Normally it would, but because it's in our git ignore, we're telling git to ignore this file. We're saying we don't want to um, commit that file. Now, there are plenty of Unix commands you can throw in here too. You could do, you know, this stands means 
anything that ends with a .php ignore. So, you know, maybe you don't want PHP files, or maybe, you know, we don't want CSS files. Maybe we say .php, but not index.php. So, all PHP files ignore, but don't ignore index.php. That one we want to keep. So you can kind of look up the regular expressions, um, you know, they're kind of generic Unix commands if you really want to, you know, get into ignoring all these things, which you probably will. So it's something to look up. But in the meanwhile, really, you just need to know this get ignore is just used to say, ignore this file. Do not commit this file. I don't want anyone else to see this file. This is my personal use. If we commit it, maybe it's going to screw everyone else up. This is just for me. So that's kind of how git ignore works.